The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, a local Health Mart pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, Kiko Auctioneers, and of course our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our very special guest, Dr. David Gutlove from Mercy Pain Management Services. Good morning, doctor, and welcome to the show. Good morning. If you have low back pain, you are not alone. About 80% of adults have experienced low back pain at some point during their lifetimes. It's the most common cause of job-related disability and a leading contributor to missed work days, according to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. In fact, more than a quarter of adults have reported that they have experienced low back pain during the past three months. Today we're going to talk about symptoms, treatment, options, and more. We'd like to remind our listeners today that our program is available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store on your favorite mobile phone. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime. If you have questions you'd like addressed today, you can post them up on our live Facebook feed, or you can give us a call here at the radio station at 330-450-1480. So, Dr. Gutlove, tell us a little about yourself and your experiences. Well, I'm a pain management doctor here at Mercy Medical Center. I've been at Mercy about 20 years, in Canton for about 25 years, and practicing pain management for about 30 years. I um, went to medical school at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., did my anesthesia residency at Wolford Hall Medical Center, San Antonio, Texas, uh, United States Air Force, and my pain management fellowship at Stanford University in California. How long were you in the military? I was in the military for nine plus years, okay. a- active duty. Okay, back in w- w- what time frame would that be? Oh, that was in the let's see, that was uh, eighty in the eighties, um, eighty to eighties to nineties. So maybe you missed all the wars. <laughs> I, I was in uh, I the Gulf War. The Gulf War. Okay, yeah. all right. First or second? I forget. I was in the first one, okay. uh, stationed uh, in uh, Riyadh for about six months. Oh, okay, <laughs> interesting. So, um, do you specialize in any specific area of pain management? Not necessarily specialized, but um, I certainly have an interest in low back pain, um, musculoskeletal injuries, and sports injuries. But I, 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 as all three of the physicians at Mercy do, we tend to see all patients. Are you a team doctor for one of the teams based no, football? No, not a team doctor, no. Right, okay. Typically, the orthopedic surgeons are team doctors, but sometimes it's primary care doctors. I know Dr. Johns is a primary care physician, yeah. and yet he's a team doctor from McKinley. Yeah, okay. How about uh, give us a little background on Mercy Pain Management Services and what goes on there? We have uh, three doctors there, um, myself, Dr. Lewis, and Dr. Batala, uh, three nurse practitioners and one PA. We have three different locations, uh, the hospital, so the main hospital at Mercy, Mercy Jackson Facility, and Mercy Alliance. Um, we offer evaluation treatment of acute and chronic pain virtually any any cause or any type from fibromyalgia to low back pain cervical pain mm. knee pain um, cancer pain what have you we try to incorporate kind of an um, integrative approach utilizing procedures incorporating physical therapy chiropractic care tens units what have you do um generally do you need a referral from your primary care physician to see you typically yes okay yes. All right, so you mentioned the low back pain thing. If I get more questions in the pharmacy about pain, it's probably low back pain. So why don't you give us the 411 on how common it is? And Low back pain, is, as I think you gave some statistics before, over 100 million Americans <coughs> suffer from chronic low back pain on a daily basis. It's about Remember, a third of the population. No, about a third of the population. Yeah, okay. well, Remember that pain is typically the most common reason patients will go to see their doctor. Uh, the two most common pain complaints are low back pain and headaches. As you said, 80% of Americans will experience low back pain at some point in time in their life. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very prevalent. That's because mm-hmm. we were never supposed to stand up, right? As, 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 <laughs> that's what I've always heard. It's probably multifactorial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So why do you suppose it's on the rise? Well, 1997, 29% of adults 65 years and older had chronic low back pain. And by 2018, it's 35% of adults, again, 65 years and older, a 6% increase in 21 years, which happens to be statistically significant, it likely, again, is multifactorial. We're a more sedentary society. We probably were not supposed to be so sedentary with self-driving cars, computers, fast mm-hmm. food, 
um, iPhones that practically think for us um, likely has a lot to do with it, but it's multifactorial. Mm-hmm. Increasing um, waist sizes, a girth, abdominal girth, probably has something to do with it as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, now they, they just announced on the radio that uh, uh, Apple expects to sell $109 million in the first year of their new phone. That I guess it has all kinds of medical stuff in it, blood pressure and whatever, whatever. It's going to put you guys out of work or what? I think in the future, iPhones will do everything. Almost uh, take us to the ba- lead us to the bathroom, and tell us that we have to go to the bathroom. And, yeah. and it's uh, it's exploded the technology, obviously. Yeah. I don't know if it's good or bad. I think sometimes I, I think the iPhones sometimes are stressful, you know, because of people can get you on the phone, you know, any time of the day, any time of the night. Well, one of my pet peeves is people don't talk anymore. They don't talk yeah. every day. Everybody texts. Yeah, amazing. So, so we're seeing a, a, a young, the younger people, aren't we, with more low back pain? Mm-hmm. And, and is that, in fact, related to the bigger waist? And Likely so. I mean, childhood obesity has something to do with it, certainly. Uh, certainly, low back pain is more common in older patients. Mm-hmm. It's a, a part of the aging process, degenerative process, but we do see more younger patients nowadays than, than when I first got into medicine many, mm-hmm. many years ago. Hmm. Wow. So, what is your patient's most common symptoms it's um it's variable i mean it's kind of all over the map some patients will present strictly with low back pain alone some will have low back pain lumbar radicular symptoms meaning pain that radiates down their legs some will have strictly just leg pain some will have um foot pain or ankle pain which actually is related to the back um and some patients can be um again combination thereof so it really is very variable depends on the individual patient Hmm. So low back muscle strains and ligament strains occur. Um, why do we abuse our body too much, or what are we doing here? Well, lumbar strain is the most common cause of low back pain. It is. Um, the back is prone to strains because of its weight-bearing function, its involvement in really moving, twisting, bending. Um, the lumbar strain is really caused when the muscle fibers are abnormally stretched and sometimes mm-hmm. torn. Torn. They can actually be torn. Mm-hmm. Um, typically occurs from a sudden injury, but it can also occur over time with gradual overuse. Okay. So you talk about low back pain, and the first thing I think of is people are lifting things that are either too heavy or they're not doing it the right way. So it, what's the appropriate way if you're going to lift something heavy? You're supposed to lift with your legs, not sh- not your lift back, Lift with your right? legs and not with your back, correct. So you're more of a squat and stand up than you are a bend over and try to snap up or Without whatever that right. okay. but most of us don't use proper mechanics to uh, lift heavy objects and we're just mm. going to do the job and we're tough it. we can handle it right mm, theoretically yeah mm. all right well mm. don't overdo it because that could be bad so all right um what about um you mentioned degenerative earlier so i assume you're talking about the discs in our back is that what you're referring to? And what's can you give our listeners an explanation of what a degenerative disc disease is? Well, degenerative disc disease really is kind of thinning of the discs or um, drying out of the discs, and it occurs typically again as we get older. Um, so the shock absorber. If you think of discs like the shock absorbers in the spine um, that cushion the spine, the discs over time tend to get thinner as we get older because of the forces of gravity and the aging process. Uh, there could be bone spurs that are uh, that are uh, related to it. Um, well, what we call we, osteophytes. Why, why, why do we get spurs, bone spurs? And it's just an arthritic process. It's kind of uh, again either somewhat overuse or it could be uh, minor trauma that can cause bone spurs. Some people f- tend to form calcium deposits more than others, and so they can uh, they can form parts of the body, the knees, the shoulders, elbows, wrists, but also in the spine. Now you mentioned drying of the discs. Um, can we relubricate them? <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> uh, not really lubricate. Uh, relubricate. There is disc replacement surgery, which, which interestingly enough tends to work much better in Europeans than it does in Americans. And really, now I'm not certain why. What I don't think. I don't think there's anything anatomically different about American spine than Europeans. Um, but they had very uh, they had great results with disc replacement surgery. Theoretically, great results in huh. in Europe when it was brought to this country. Um, a decade or more ago, it, it, the results are, are um, minimal um, wow. at best. How interesting is that? So yeah. most surgeons, at least in this area, and I think in the Midwest, do not do disc replacement surgery at all. Oh, it tends oh. not to work. Wow. Well, let's see. They're wine drinkers and we're beer drinkers. And then, is that something to do with it? <laughs> uh, could be. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Tell us about spondylolysis. 
Well, spondylolisthesis, thesis, if we're going to talk about that, um, simply put, spondylolisthesis thesis is one slippage vertebra over another. Usually it's associated mm. with something called spondylolysis, which is a defect in the par, something called the pars interarticularis, which is a small segment of bone near the facet joints. Um, there's different causes. It can be congenital, which is the isthmic spondylolisthesis thesis due to stress fractures. It can be degenerative cause, traumatic, etc. It's typically graded one to four, depending upon the degree of slippage or the mm. percent of slippage. Hmm. Um, and the symptoms of spinal anesthesis really vary. I mean, some patients are asymptomatic. They don't even know they have spinal anesthesis. Tell me, explain to me again what it is. What, what again, is it's slippage spot? of vertebra, either forward or backwards. One, they're not lined up. So okay. one is either slipped forward or one is slipped backward. It's called spinal anesthesis. And again, hmm. it's, it's, it's typically word. a spot. word's too big. <laughs> <laughs> and it may or may not be associated with spondylolysis, which is really a kind of a small fracture that allows one disc oh. to slip forward or, okay. or back. Oh, or, I'm sorry, one vertebra slip forward or back on another vertebra. Huh. Okay. Hmm. Wow. And the, it can, again, patients could be asymptomatic. They can have low back pain. They can have low back pain, lumbar ridiculous symptoms. If there is enough slippage, hmm. they'll probably have weakness of the legs and may need surgery. Hmm. Hmm. I was going to say, it sounds painful and makes me hurt just thinking yeah. about shifting of those bones. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to take a break here, uh, J.D. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine mm-hmm. Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. It's that time of year again. It's time to protect your family against the flu virus. Hi, this is your pharmacist, Brad White, from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Flu vaccination should be a priority to you and your family, so take the steps today to protect yourself. Visit any of our Medicine Center pharmacies and get your flu shot. And don't forget to stock up on items to boost your immune system, like probiotics and multivitamins. The Medicine Center pharmacies are conveniently located in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Brighten your day with beautiful stained glass from Studio Arts and Glass. Let the sun shine in through a stunning beveled glass window that forms a rainbow on your walls. Commission a piece of art to cherish for years. All at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, or shop online at studioartsandglass.com. That's studioartsandglass.com. Medicine Center Pharmacy was named the 2018 Best of the Best Pharmacy. We'd like to thank our customers and our staff for the honor. Our 13 pharmacists in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia help keep you healthy and save money. From free kids' vitamins to compounded prescriptions and affordable diabetes care. Ask how we can help, and don't forget, we have free screenings at our pharmacies on Tuesdays. Call 330-454-8772 for more information or visit MedShopRx.com. MedShopRx.com.
Welcome back. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're discussing low back pain with Dr. David Gutlove, Medical Director at Mercy Pain Management Services. Have a question? Post it on our live Facebook feed. All right, Doctor. Um, a couple of things we probably ought to talk about. Um, wh- what are some other causes of the problems that we're discussing this morning? Well, it's, it's numerous. It's a myriad or plethora of causes. We start, say, with occupational overactive, overuse injuries, um, for instance, construction workers, firemen, nurses that are moving patients all day long, um, also too sedentary, someone who is tied to the desk eight hours a day. Traumatic injuries from sports, recreation, motor vehicle accidents, what have you. Um, postural injuries, people with poor, poor posture, weak abdominal core muscles, which by uh, having weak abdominal core muscles, it actually will weaken the lumbar paraspinous muscles. So the single most important exercise to support the lower back is actually strengthening the abdominal muscles, whether it's uh, crunches, sit-ups, pilates, planks, um, yoga, what have you. It's all about the core, huh? How about about the chairs that people sit in? And and, um, where I'm heading here was like the lazy boy chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. That leads to more slumping. It leads to poor posture and things versus someone who has an ergonometrically configured workspace where they're, you know, the computer. Sometimes people work standing up um, because it's better than sitting down. It's better for the back. Sure. I've seen the stand up desk where they go Mm -hmm. lower and up. They can lower. Sure. Other causes uh, disc herniations, um, which is a proverbial kind of jelly squirting out of the jelly donut. We talked about before the Mm -hmm. discs are um, made up of two components. There's a nucleus pulposus, which is the center gelatinous material, which kind of cushions the spine or or the discs. Then there's an outer annulus fibrosus, which is kind of the the tough outer casing, which contains the gelatinous material inside. Spinal stenosis, again, stenosis really just means constricting or narrowing of the spine, Um, actually narrowing of anywhere in the body. Mm. If someone has stenosis in a coronary artery vessel or the carotid uh, artery, it means it's just closing up, constricting or narrowing. So by we, when we talk about spinal stenosis, it could either mean the spinal canal that's running vertically up and down from the brainstem down to the tailbone is narrowing down or the nerves are exiting out horizontally, um, which is called mm. foraminal stenosis. So anatomically, the spine is... Um uh, blood su- blood supply and nerve supply is, is that correct? Sure, you can think of it. There's, bl- there's nerves and blood, and uh, I mean the spinal cord. Then there's nerves that exit horizontally, but there's also blood supply to the spinal cord itself. Sure. Okay, so so stenosis can affect either the blood in the extremity extremities or the nervous system in the extremity. You, you right. Know? Typically, primarily, it's going to respond. It'll, it will affect the nervous system, okay. but then secondarily can affect blood vessels that are running along those nerves, small okay. nerves. <laughs> sure. So we, we, with a stenosis, we have a better chance of uh, tingling in your legs or, or, Correct. Or, or pain in your legs or something like Correct. that. That's the most common thing we see in, in older patients, hmm. spinal stenosis or okay. frameal stenosis. Okay. So what do you ask a patient? So a patient comes in, doctor, I am having terrible pain. How do you take a history and try to get to the bottom of it before you go to do a whole bunch of expensive medical tests? Well, typically, obviously, we start with a history of physical exam. It's the most important thing. Um, we'll ask the patient's quality of pain. It, describe the pain. Sharp, burning, dull, aching, stabbing. Does it radiate or it stays just in, your, just in your back? Is it radiating down into your buttocks, legs, towards the feet? Um, the severity of the pain, uh, the um, classic visual analog scale, 0 to 10, 0 being no pain, 10 being wor- worst possible pain. Mm. What makes a pain better? What makes it worse? Is it diurnal variation, meaning is it worse during the day, worse during the night? Um, does it affect your sleep cycles, et cetera? I can only imagine what the financial impact must be for someone who can't ambulate and walk around or stand up or do their job. Do you have any statistics on that or any it's, comments? Um, it's, uh, the economic toll is staggering. Um, greater than $100 billion is spent annually in the United States mm-hmm. on low back pain, just in, just in the U.S. alone. One-third of that is due to treatment, and two-thirds is due to lost wages and productivity. Hmm. And I think, as you mentioned before, Um, Low back pain is actually, I think it may be the second most common cause of disability in our society. Actually, the number one, at least what I read, is mental health. Mental health issues may be number one, and and Hmm. low back pain is disability, and disability would be number two. Hmm. Interesting. Is it? All right, we had a question, if you're interested. We have Heather from Canton calling. Is yoga good or bad for low back pain? 
I think yoga is excellent for it. Um, it's one of the alternative therapies um, or treatments that um, people will utilize. Um, that along with Pilates, acupuncture, um, what have you. If a patient is motivated to do it and it feels good to do it and it seems to help you, absolutely. Then patients should certainly do it. Does your, cl- it, does your clinic do acupuncture? Uh, we do not, no. Okay. No, there are some uh, acupuncturists in town, though. Sure, we've we got a couple on the show, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And some of the chiropractors will do acupuncture. Um, even now, the physical therapists are doing something called a dry needling technique, mm, yeah. which is really more like trigger points. It's not really yeah. acupuncture per se, but uh, many years ago they were not doing it. Now they're licensed to do that. Mm. But um, I think yoga is excellent, absolutely. Mm. Mind-body connection and, and um, strengthening core muscles, without a doubt. So, how about some warning signs in the patients with low back pain? Warning signs, red flags or um, yellow flags, cause things that we're concerned about. Um, bladder or bowel dysfunction, proximal like weakness, fever, chills, rigors, which are kind of shakes all over the body, unexplained weight loss, patients that are immunocompromised or a low immune system. Um, those are things that we as practitioners are very concerned about. So if a patient relates those, or we see them on exam, again, proximal leg weakness, meaning the patient's getting weaker and weaker in their legs and they're actually falling, okay. it certainly requires urgent um, workup, uh, usually with a, a CAT scan, MRI, um, and possibly an urgent or emergent surgical referral, hmm. depending upon the cause. Okay. So um, you mentioned some of the testing devices. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I've always heard that going to an MRI is kind of the last resort because of cost. Is that accurate? Sometimes we like it to be the first uh, first line, but sure. uh, the insurance companies typically have other ideas. Um, yeah. Many times the well, insurance companies... of course, company, they're better doctors than you guys are, too. You know. mm-hmm. uh, they can tell us how to practice, and, uh, and <laughs> uh, they know it's better for our patients than we do. But um, So many times the insurance companies will tell us that we need to first have the patient get plain x-rays and they have to fail physical therapy before they will consider it. Man. Um, <laughs> in everything in medicine, again, as I said before, it begins with history and physical exam. Regarding imaging studies, x-rays, um, basic screening shows bony structures, may show some acute changes. CAT scan is a little bit more sophisticated. Um, it's better to elucidate bony abnormalities than soft tissue. Um, It can look for subtle fractures or subtle degenerative changes which are not picked up on x-ray. And then an MRI is typically the best to demonstrate soft tissue abnormalities, disc problems, um, nerves, etc. We used sound therapy years ago. Is that still... I can't can't even remember the name of it. Physical therapists will use ultrasound. Yes, ultrasound, they will. Ultrasound, DP, um, electrical stimulation, etc. Okay. It's time for our second break and the news. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. We understand the one-size-fits-all approach doesn't always work. We do customized compounded medications based on your doctor's prescription to match your specific needs. Hi, I'm your pharmacist, Brad White, from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Do you use or need customized compounded prescription medications because of allergies, special formulations, or need an easier way to take your medication that isn't available? Many physicians choose to prescribe a medication that is not commercially made and requires a pharmacy like ours with special equipment and training to prepare a capsule, suspension, cream, or tablet. Are you sensitive to lactose, dyes, or need a sugar-free suspension? The Medicine Center Pharmacy is here to help you. Every day we prepare custom medications for infants, adults, and pets in our PCAB 
accredited compounding lab. Call or stop by the Medicine Center Pharmacy today at 551 West High Avenue in New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Have you seen the latest inventory in the Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville? Two new shipments have arrived at the store, and they include everything from EOS body lotions to home decor and lighting. We have a huge selection of fans in several colors, one for every room. Lots of Halloween costumes for babies, little kids, and adults, and Halloween decor. Yes, Halloween is just around the corner. We'll find cots, luggage, household items like blinds, accent furniture pieces, dirt devils, and much, much more. Come see us at the Louisville Half Off and Hot Buy store next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brighten your day with beautiful stained glass from Studio Arts and Glass. Let the sun shine in through a stunning beveled glass window that forms a rainbow on your walls. Commission a piece of art to cherish for years. All at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, or shop online at studioartsandglass.com. That's studioartsandglass.com. You won't want to miss this upcoming Kiko Absolute Auction, September 27th, with auctioneer Bill Gill Jr. You'll find diamond and costume jewelry, art, antiques, collectibles, clocks, oriental rugs, pedal tractors, and furniture, including cabinets, dressers, and more. Mark your calendar for Thursday, September 27th at 3 p.m. at the Kiko Auction Gallery located at 3201 Parkway Street Northwest in Canton. Call Bill Gill Jr. at 330-418-8727 or visit KikoAuctions.com for pictures, bidding instructions, and more information. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about low back pain with Dr. David Gutlove, Medical Director of Mercy Pain Management Services. A lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. Where are we? Um, we talked about exam, exams and x-rays and all that sort of thing. Do we want to take this question? Well, over the break, we were talking about it, so why don't we? Bill from Navarre gave us a call, and he wants to know, Doctor, if you recommend pain creams instead of prescription pain meds. We're probably jumping ahead a little, but we don't want to leave Bill hanging. Absolutely. I mean, if it's uh, something, most pain creams are innocuous. There's not going to be side effects to them unless you're allergic to the uh, components of it and you get a skin skin, uh, irritation. So I think it's certainly worthwhile to try it. Um, And uh, if it doesn't help, then move on to something else. Mm And ask your pharmacist or doctor about, you know, what recommendations they have to use because you don't want to use something improperly and hurt yourself. So even thing, even though things are over the counter, it doesn't always mean that they're safe for everyone used improperly. Right. Well, so. and there are so many now in the marketplace and about 16 different brands of uh, cooling gels, and which we do sell a lot of. We have our own private label. Uh, Salon Pass is out there with, uh, I think they just jumped into the lidocaine patch thing. Uh, here and they're the ones I think that make the lotion. The, um, They've been around for lidocaine. years, but yeah, yeah, I think they do have a lidocaine version now. So now you got to yeah. really make sure you read your labels. Yeah. So. so you know those products, if boy, if they work, that's great. You know, you don't have to take anything internally. The the number of pills, the tablets, uh, uh, naproxens and, and ibuprofens, and, and even I don't know where aspirin plays anymore. We, don't, we still sell aspirin, but it's a lot. Less, of course, than it was many years mm-hmm. ago. But as you mentioned before, I mean, the, the over-the-counter medicines doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be innocuous or not cause side effects. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at the use of NSAIDs, Aleve, Ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin. Um, those can cause GI bleeds, can cause yeah. kidney function, um, kidney dysfunction or kidney uh, function abnormalities, et cetera. So it, it's just been, well, isn't it just sort of been recently that the people that are consuming these products that there's a lot more warnings about kidney issues and you've been around a fair amount of time to remember apc which was finacetin was the one of the uh items in in that three combo pain reliever aspirin mm-hmm. finacetin coat and that coating caffeine <laughs> and i think they took the finacetin out a long time ago because of the caffeine or because of the the Kidney issues. I don't even remember what it was about. But and now the NSAIDs also have the black box warning. Yeah. Um, stroke and heart attacks. Yeah. Um, prescription and non-prescription ones also. So that's sure. uh, that is fairly new over the last several years. Well, we get these people who just keep t- keep taking and taking them. We don't look at the directions, and we're thinking, 
We had a guy that took 75 Tylenol once, and I thought, holy smokes, because mm-hmm. he couldn't r- reduce his headache. Did you look at the bottle? And then I think that's the most important thing. Did he develop a liver failure? I he don't did. Know. He had to go to the hospital. Yeah, they saved him, but yeah. and that's, I guess, what that's that was my actually in the back of my mind, my thought. You know, just because it's available over the counter doesn't mean you have you you need to still use it with care. Very good point. So, yeah. very good point. What about other medications, doctor? What um what or therapies even? I'm sure there's. You've talked about an integrated approach. There's more than one way to skin a cat, if you will, other than. Pills. Right. Treatment options, um, there's a wide variety or plethora of different treatment options. First of all, realize that 90% of people who have acute back pain, whether it's a first episode of acute back pain or whether it's a flare-up of their chronic back pain, 90% of that time, it's going to resolve within six weeks hmm. using over-the-counter analgesics, ice, heat, uh, walking, light exercises, and avoiding prolonged bed rest. Uh, to digress, or interestingly enough, when I first got into medicine decades and decades ago, we would treat low back pain with hospitalization, strict bed rest, so patients could not even get out of bed to use the bathroom, and they were in traction, and they'd be that way for weeks. And the most interesting thing, the insurance companies would pay for it. Okay, Now, not at all. The, the, uh, the premise is that the patients should remain active, strong, avoid bed rest, etc. So it's gone totally the opposite way. So no more traction? No more traction to treat, um, to treat chronic back pain or acute flare-up of back pain? No. Not at all. It's it's rare that patients will be admitted strictly for back pain. We do see it occasionally in the hospital, but not very common because the insurance companies won't pay for it. Yeah, interesting. Other options, physical therapy, myofascial release, ultrasound, DP, electrical stimulation, um, McKenzie extension exercises, uh, again, abdor- abdominal core strengthening exercises. Um, other treatments, um, injections. We at Mercy, we offer a whole host of different injections for back mm-hmm. pain. Epidurals, selective nerve root blocks, facet injections, um, lumbar medial branch blocks, radiofrequency ablation, spinal cord stimulation, etc. It's kind of beyond the scope of today's discussion, especially on the radio where there's no visual um, visual aids. But uh, suffice it to say, it's certainly a mainstay of what we do at Mercy. Okay. Hot or cold treatment. We sell tons of ice ice bags, tons of heating pads, tons of thermophore. Well, not tons of thermophore. We sell thermophore pads and <laughs> super the, hot. The party line in medicine is that after an acute injury, you use ice for the first 24 or 48 hours and okay. heat thereafter. Okay. However, however, <laughs> there are patients that have long-standing chronic pain years later and still say ice works better than heat. Hmm. There are patients with acute injuries and right from the start they'll say ice made it worse, I'm going to use heat. So whatever the patient says is better for them, that's okay. Wow. <laughs> when in doubt. <laughs> okay. I love it. You know, the goal for us when we do injections typically is not to necessarily fix the problem because it doesn't necessarily fix the problem. Yeah. But it's really to decrease the patient's pain, um, enable them, him or her to participate more in physical therapy, increase their activities, improve their quality of life, et cetera. I see. Okay. So what about oral therapies that um, may complement your comp- your integrated therapies you mentioned? I remember speaking with a hospice nurse years ago and had a fascinating education of not all pain types respond to certain medications. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we have different pain pathways you can attack based on how those signals are transmitted to the brain to say that, hey, I'm in pain. But um, I guess where I'm going is is opioids aren't always the answer. No, they're not, not always the answer, um, and especially in today's environment where um, the political winds have shifted quite a bit, we tend to try to avoid opioids quite a bit. We'll use um, prescription... Has, mu- has that been troublesome? I mean, okay. Has it been troublesome? I know people have real pain, okay? I mean, there's people with some really severe pain. Is that a... You go ahead with that. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a whole Pandora's box. It has certainly uh, changed dramatically. It's changed dramatically. As, um, as we know, in the year 2000, um, patients were being undertreated. Um, we were not writing enough narcotics. So it was a decade of pain management from 2000 to 2010. Fast forward to 2015, um, now doctors are writing too many narcotics. Um, and we have, there's a, a thought that we've partially com- um, created the uh, heroin epidemic in our country by writing um, too many narcotics for patients, getting those patients hooked on narcotics. Those patients thereby go out on the street and therefore use heroin. Therefore, partially, not entirely, but partially, it's our fault as a heroin epidemic. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a whole topic of a different discussion. Sure. The point is we try to minimize use of narcotics or, um, and maybe use it for short term. Other medications we certainly could use, prescription muscle relaxants, the anti-inflammatory medications, but again, they have black box warnings and can cause GI distress or bleeds and, and liver uh, and, uh, kidney issues, mm-hmm. oral steroids for short term. The antidepressant medicines, we use those pretty uh, frequently um, in treating pain. Not necessarily to treat um, depression, although patients with chronic pain will suffer from depression because their quality of life is poor, they can't do the activities they want to do, but primarily to restore normalized sleep patterns as well as provide additional analgesic benefit by increasing serotonin levels, Mm -hmm. um, norepinephrine levels in the brain, etc. Then there's what we call the membrane-stabilizing medications, the anti-seizure medicines, uh, this so-called Neurontin Lyrica, which most people yeah. are very familiar with. Um, those, again, are anti-seizure medicines, and yet they tend to be fairly lousy anti-seizure medicines. Most doctors do not write those for seizures. They're almost exclusively written for pain. Not, all, not exclusively, but almost exclusively written for pain. The premise behind using those medications is that they're supposed to quiet down nerves that are hyperactive. Okay, Not somebody feeling nervous in their body. But if you take the uh, prototypical someone who's got spinal stenosis causing um, closing up of the spine and they have sciatic symptoms, in that individual, the sciatic nerve is hyperactive like a short-circuiting wire. The anti-seizure medicines, because of different mechanisms, are supposed to work preferentially on the nerves that are hyperactive while leaving the rest of the nerves in the body alone. That's the premise behind using it. On a cellular basis, they work by um, their voltage-sensitive calcium channel antagonists that bind to the um, alpha-2 delta subunit of the calcium channel, thereby blocking it. But it sounds better to say they quiet down nerves that are hyperactive. So so what's, what are the, the Neurontin? What are some of those other seizure meds you do use? Well, again, Neurontin and Lyrica are the most common, common ones we use right now. Um, back when I started medicine a long time ago, um, we used to use mixilatine. Mm-hmm. We would use flecainide, which um, most of the, I think they're off the market now. Yeah, they don't even yeah. exist anymore. But that was uh, when I first started doing pain, pain management. That's what we did. Neurontin was brand new after I'd been in practice for a while. So mm-hmm. that's how that's how long I've been doing this. Um, now Neurontin is old hat. The Lyric has now replaced Neurontin. Well, you know, years ago there was a one of the big financial guys that came up with this big research thing on Dilantin, and he just claimed that it was for headache pain. He claimed that was the greatest thing in the world. He mm-hmm. put a ton of money in this thing. To, to, you know, to try and get a sim- new sim- extra symptom in the med- meds for that and sort of thing. I- and nowadays, they use top- Topamax for that instead, mm-hmm. yeah. which is very commonly yeah. used. Uh, for some reason, it works preferentially uh, on headaches, and the other ones don't. Mm-hmm. But again, that's an anti-seizure medicine as well, or a membrane stabilizer. Mm-hmm. Hmm. We're all over the planet here. Where are we at? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're going to end up talking about surgery here, but maybe we ought to do that after this radio break. Is that all right, J.D.? I guess it is. <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I can mention a little bit about chiropractor. Maybe. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you seen the latest inventory in the Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville? Two new shipments have arrived at the store, and they include everything from EOS body lotions to home decor and lighting. We have a huge selection of fans in several colors, one for every room. Lots of Halloween costumes for babies, little kids, and adults, and Halloween decor. Yes, Halloween is just around the corner. We'll find cots, luggage, household items like blinds, accent furniture pieces, dirt devils, and much, much more. Come see us at the Louisville Half Off and Hot Buy store next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The warmer weather is here. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. 
If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacist can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Welcome back to Health Matters at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're talking about low back pain today with Dr. David Gutlove, Medical Director at Mercy Pain Management Services. Let's get back to the show. Okay. What do we want to do next? Well, I'm thinking, you know, we talked about it in the beginning of the program, but how about for listeners just joining us, can you tell a patient when it's a good idea to go to the doctor if they have low back pain and at what point they may need a referral to come see a specialist like yourself? Because I'm not sure we covered that. Well, certainly most people who have experienced low back pain will um, they'll probably treat it on their own. They may do some stretching. They may rest for a little while. Um, take over the counter medications and if it doesn't work it doesn't help um, and the, the pain is getting severe and or they're having increasing radicular pains down their legs and or weakness of the legs that typically will prompt them to come and see us mm-hmm. um, and th- we talked about the, uh, the warning signs or red flags before previously bladder bowel dysfunction increasing leg weakness uh, fever chills etc um, it's variable because some people will, will gut it out and they'll actually um, have put up with back pain and treat it for, by themselves for six months or more and other people um, at the first sign of back pain they're going to go to see the doctor So, but I certainly think if, they, if they're having neurologic issues they need to come and see us without a doubt with the gutted out people you know I think of us stubborn men sometimes are you doing more damage in the long run if you delay therapy with lower back pain or yes, and, yes and no if it's okay. lumbar strain um, and they're treating it correctly on their own by resting it but then again not prolonged bed rest they're actually doing some light exercises walking that type of thing using all the counter analgesics heat and ice they're not doing more damage if okay. it's something more sinister like a significant disc herniation that has occurred because they tried to lift up a a small car <laughs> and, blew their, and blew their back out um, okay then um, those people probably and they're having now significant pain on the leg and weakness on the leg they should come and see us sooner That's than a later problem okay. yes yeah. all right so you've talked about medications we've talked about um, alternative therapies uh, from massage to chi- do you want to talk about chiropractic Sure. Um, certainly with chiropractic care, the literature is replete or chock full of evidence that chiropractic care is effective in treating acute and subacute back pain. I mean, there's um, well-documented evidence in the literature. Um, so I think the, um, the integration of chiropractic care in some degree um, and or physical therapy is imperative to keep those patients active, get them moving, um, and getting them back to their, improving their quality of life. Their chiropractors are high on, on adjustments, okay, mm-hmm. like the adjustment of your spine or, or adjustment of your neck, okay. Helpful? Most of the time, yes. Okay. Um, and most of the chiropractors in town are very good. I mean, they're, they are very astute at picking up that if, if it's something that they deem to be more significant, 
where there's some neurologic compromise or potential for it or instability of the spine, they will not do manipulation. They may do some electrical stimulation. They may do some um, massage. They may do some other modalities that are more passive modalities, not really manipulation. And if it doesn't work, then they'll refer them on or they'll refer them to us or a surgeon sooner. So they're pretty astute about that. They're not going to be manipulating um, patient's spine that someone has an instability that can now so-called uh, damage even more, make the person paralyzed now. Sure. Okay. So you mentioned the S word. What about surgery? When does that become an option? We, try to, we tell patients um, it should be a last resort. And the surgical colleagues in town who make a living um, by cutting on people are very good about that also. Mm. The majority of them, um, almost all of them, will say the same thing. You should try more conservative therapies first. Mm. Um, certainly, again, if someone's having bladder or bowel dysfunction, neurologic compromise, increasing leg weakness, then they may indeed need surgery. And typically, again, it's a last resort for someone who has a radiculopathy, meaning um, damage of the nerve, may be caused by a disc herniation or a stenosis that will then require surgery. But again, our surgical colleagues are very good about it. Where They, they will um, tell patients that, you know, come back and see me only if you need to. If you failed everything else, then as a last-ditch effort or last resort, we'll, we'll try surgery. So, so backing up here on stenosis, um, in stenosis, is it? it's not typical that the entire spinal column is shrinking. Right? Not typically, no. It can involve multiple different levels, yeah, but not okay. the entire column. Typically, the entire. it's in a spot. Or, it's or, typically or. in a spot. It can be in any part of the spine. It's more commonly in the neck or lower back, not okay. so much in the thoracic spine, which is the middle part of the, the uh, spine. Um, but it can occur anywhere. And it can occur, again, in the center part where the spinal cord is running vertically up and down. Or can it, it can also occur um, what we call frameal stenosis, where the nerves are coming out horizontally. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So, no surgery unless... <laughs> how many people rule on this, okay? Uh, all right, you're looking at my spine, okay? Something's out of place. Uh, you're going to send me to a chiropractor, or are you going to pound on my back, or what's the next game plan here after... You know, we've talked earlier in the show about separation of the spine, things mm-hmm. like that. Uh, so, i got a disc out of place. What do we do? There's multiple different treatments, again, as we talked about before. I mean, some patients will be inclined, okay, they come and see us, they have a disc herniation, or they have, they have a stenosis, mm-hmm. and they've been through physical therapy, or they haven't. Um, we will lay out a different treatment plan for them to include medications, physical therapy, TENS units, um, what have you, and maybe injections. So some of those patients will opt for, okay, I don't want a needle in my back. I don't want to start with that. Let me start with some other modalities. Mm-hmm. Other patients will say, I don't have time for anything else. Just give me a shot. Let me get better. Um, Other patients will come to me and say, I don't want the shot because it's not going to fix the problem. It may significantly help the problem, but it's not going to fix it. I don't want physical therapy. It's not going to fix it. I want to fix. So I want to see a surgeon. So it really depends upon the patient's frame of mind. It depends upon their mindset. It depends upon um, multiple different factors. Um, So it really is very variable. We try to... um, have a an approach where it's an individual approach with each patient. Okay. We have reduced cardiac surgery to laparoscopy techniques and all that. Is is that a technique that laparoscopy that's used in, in spinal laparoscopic, I don't laparoscopic. believe so. There is there is laser surgery now. Um okay. Uh, th- actually, maybe some centers do laparoscopic lumbar surgery, but I don't know of any around here. I'm not a surgeon. You have to ask one of my surgical colleagues about that. Um, there is a laser institute, and they're very good about um, about marketing themselves. The sort in of, my sort of the one on TV, or the something. one on TV, yeah, correct. Okay. <laughs> um, in my again, I'm not a surgeon, so I have to preface it by saying that. But um, in my simplistic mindset. If someone has a simple disc herniation at one level and they're going to use a laser to shave that part of the disc away, it may indeed be helpful. However, however, typically the insurance companies are not going to cover it, and they will ask the patient to pay fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars up front. Wow! Um, and there's no money back guarantee. Holy smoke! Wow! So, um, so buyer uh, trust but verify. Most of the surgeons I've talked to in town are against it. Um, at least the ones here that I trust implicitly um, or against it and say it really doesn't work and it's more of a um, money-making proposition. We see this commercial on TV, this lady in a bikini and a little tiny scar in the back, and they said, you know, this is one-day surgery, and they fixed my spine, and, you know, da-da-da, we use laser. and <laughs> They're very good at marketing. <laughs> they are. How can our listeners learn more about Mercy Pain Management Services? Well, we have a website, 
um, cantonmercy.org uh, backslash pain management. Our phone number to the unit, uh, 330-489-1478. Um, there is uh, other ways to get a hold of us, through certainly through the operators at Mercy, that type of thing. Excellent. And generally, it does require a referral, you yeah. mentioned before. It does. So don't bypass your primary care doctor. They are a resource also, but they can help you get the extra help you need when you have that uncomfortable pain. So I think we asked you this off, off camera a little earlier. Do you see anything super coming up here for back pain or repair? Or? Not necessarily super. I mean, they're improving surgical techniques. There's something we, uh, that we do, uh, something called spinal cord stimulation, which is kind of an implantable TENS unit, which mm. typically we will use uh, for patients that have failed back syndrome or patients that have had surgery before are still having back pain and even more so leg pain. Um, and the technology in that has improved dramatically over uh over the last 20, 25 years since I've been <laughs> doing that, or We're more, 30 years. We're out of here, okay. <laughs> Thanks, great show. Oh, great show. Thank you very much to our guest, Dr. David Gutlove, Medical Director for Mercy Pain Management Services. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, Kiko Auctioneers for sponsoring today's program. And, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAnza, standing here with us. As always, we thank you listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We are a local Health Mart pharmacy, caring for you and about you. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you again next Friday right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.